March 1st lecture, Tree Care Specialist Safety, out of the Tree Care Safety Institute Academy book. Um, very similar to what we have um, been doing. Um, but that's kind of the point of some of these books, the training, uh, the consistency of the training, the repetitiveness of that um, is what separates you, is what gives you that, that special skill um, to be able to be safe, teach others, all those types of things. So once again, I got the book in front of me. <clears throat> I've highlighted, starred some of those things that uh, to help you guys out. Um, trying to make it pretty easy for you if you actually watch the lecture. So chapter one, the principles of, principles of accident prevention. Safety begins with an attitude and is maintained by attitude, right? Attitude is the only thing that consistently influences behavior. Pay attention to that one. Um, attitudes and behaviors are shaped by the people around us. And culture is a shared set of beliefs and attitudes. So step aside from tree care safety, um, Alamance Community College, step away from all that, right? I mean, these are, these are kind of just real life, everyday, um, you know, things that, that you can relate to your every, everyday life, right? I mean, safety is an attitude. Um, you're either going to be safe, you're not going to be safe, you're going to be a rebel and not wear your stuff, wear your PPE, um, not park your vehicle in the right spot, right? That's your attitude. That's your, that's your attitude, your will to do the right thing. Um, so all those are things that you can relate to in anything that you do, not just on the job or resulting in trees, right? Um, accidents, it's an unforeseen and an unplanned event or circumstance. Pay attention to that as well. Ones with the stars, trying to help you out here. Making it pretty easy for you. Um, accidents, the failure of people, equipment, supplies, and surroundings to behave or react as expected causes most accidents, right? So the, the, the failure of what you do, whether it's you, uh, people around you, uh, the equipment um, is what is obviously what, what causes the accidents. A close call is an accident, right? Because one little slip, it would have been, it would have resulted in an injury. It would have been an accident. So um, from these standpoints, an accident is a close call. A close call is an accident because that close call would have been an accident with a slight movement, right? So frequency breeds severity, okay? The more frequently you experience a close call, the more likely it is that all those variables are, come to, are going to come together at one time and create an accident. So the more that you you know, get away with it, so to speak, eventually you're not going to get away with it. Eventually it's going to catch up to you. Um, it's just it's part of life. You lie, you cheat, you steal, you do whatever, eventually you're going to get caught. Um, same type of thing, right? You know, if you don't wear your glasses, you don't wear your hard hat, you don't uh, wear all the proper PPE, you don't park the truck in the right spot, you don't clear your safety zone, you don't do all the things that we've talked about over the last couple of weeks. Uh, eventually, you know, it's going to catch up to you. Uh, you know, that, that kind of leads into, have you ever heard, right, accidents are unavoidable, like you're always going to have an accident. Um, you know, every, something's going to happen all the time, like it's inevitable, right? That's, that's not true, right? We, we don't believe that because you create your own luck. You do the right things. You check your equipment. You set up your work zone, you brief your employees, um, you do all the things that we've talked about, you wear the PPE, you do everything to avoid allowing an accident to happen, you're creating that, right? You're creating that uh, culture, that attitude, that's your attitude in, in creating that culture, all those types of things, right? So when you do that, you, know, you create your own life. You don't do that, yeah, you know, accidents are gonna happen, okay? So what's a leading indicator? 
that your that that your unsafe behavior, that your attitude, right? That you're, it's a leading indicator that an accident's going to happen. A lagging indicator is what happens, you know, the event itself, the close call, you know, after 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 the accident, what's the damage caused? Behavior causes accidents. Ninety percent is due to an employee, a, a, an error, an unsafe behavior, right? So it's an error, it's an unsafe behavior, it's you weren't paying attention, you didn't, you know. You got tired, uh, you weren't trained properly, all, the, all those types of things, you know. 90% of accidents. So, you know, when you talk about creating your own luck, right? You know, for me, I kind of look at it like you can avoid 90% of the things that are going to happen. That other 10%, not saying you can't avoid it, but there's only a 10% chance that something else is going to happen when you've got 90% taken care of, right? You know, and if 90% is taken care of and you have everything marked off and you have everything squared away, everybody's wearing their PPE, when that 10% does happen, maybe it doesn't cause an accident, right? It was just like, a oh, wow, that was, that, was, that was good. We did all these other things and nobody got hurt. Right? So common types of accidents. Talk about six when we're talking about trees, falls from elevation, struck by, contact with an energy conductor, uh, transportation vehicle related accident, accidents, um, the chipper accidents, and the chainsaw accidents. So put a per, put a little perspective on um, you know percentage. The book kind of does that um, as well. You know, 29% from falls from elevation, 44% by struck by. 16 from an electrical conductor, um, and, and so on. You know, the book goes over a couple good, a, a couple good um, accidents, things that that happened. Um, talks about those types of things. I'm not going to read all those. Um, I think I think you guys can read through those. You know, and, and realize what what happens, right? Um, you know, I think one one that kind of stuck out to me was the saw operator and the tree being felled from a struck by, under the struck by um, thing. You know, just to read, read read a little bit of that and talk about it. An employee was cutting down a dead pine. The employee apparently intended to land the tree next to an exist an existing palm. As the tree being cut began to fall, it landed on the palm. At that point, the upper end of the dead pine tree broke off and fell. The bottom section of the pine had risen up and began sliding back towards the employee. The employee started to run directly away from the tree, but in the direction the tree was sliding. The tree struck the employee in the head, sending him to the ground when the tree landed on him and then rolled off. You know, um, we talked about you know your safety zone. You talked about your escape zone, your escape routes, um, all those types of things. You know, uh, this particular thing. You know, the employee was pronounced dead on the scene. I'm not going to speculate and say that he didn't do all that. I'm not going to not going to do that, especially when there was a death involved. But 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 we can question it, right? Did he did he do all that? Did he did he have all that planned out? Um, because we should be able to, even though you want to fall the tree here, if it falls a little bit this way, what's my plan, right? That's why I have an escape route. Um, whatever that case is, you know, if it does fall here, I know that tree is going to topple because it's dead. It's going to start to break up. Um, is everything is everything taken care of if it does go that way? Um, so you know, you question those you, you you question those things, and you know, don't mean to be. Um, insincere right but you know when you when you die um, it's a little late to question it right um, whether it's you whether it's somebody you work with whatever the case is um, you know when death is when death is a possibility in, in these types of things um, it's a whole lot easier to question gee whiz i wish i would have done that gee whiz we should have done that um, you know that's the whole point of Talking about these things over and over and over again seem to be repetitive. It's in one book, it's in the next book, it's in the next book, um, but it's all trying to hammer it home um, so we become, it becomes second nature to what we do when we're out working. Elements of a safety program, 
four elements on the safety program, management commitment, uh, and employee involvement, right? So it's management as motivating force, you as the manager, the owner, you know, do you want to have your people safe? Do you want to not cause accidents? Then you need to implement those types of things. You need to be the motivating factor. You need to set up the trainings. You need to do those types of things. Uh, and employees need to develop their own commitment, right? So management can jam it down your neck all that they want, um, but you have to be willing to be involved with that as well. You know, and going back to week one, whatever the case was, um, you know, it's your body, it, it's your limbs, your fingers, you know, it's all that type of stuff. You're the one that's going home to, you know, without an arm, whatever the case is, right? I mean, your manager and the people that work with you may feel bad for you, but at the end of the day, you're the one that has to live with it. Um, so, you know, you should have an involvement. You should have a desire uh, to do those, to do those things right. Uh, work site analysis, your hazard assessment, um, uh, chapter two here hazard prevention and control and training, right? So these are, these, are what's, these are what's included in a safety program. Your commitment, management commitment, uh, worksite analysis, hazard prevention and control, and the training aspect. So hazard assessment, um, you know, what is a hazard? Hazard's an unsafe condition or an action or a behavior likely to result in or contribute to an accident. Okay, dead tree, it's an unsafe condition, right? Operating a chainsaw with one hand, it's an action, it's an unsafe action, okay? Job hazard analysis, simple, straightforward method of hazard assessment, right? So what is, what, what, what's, what's included in those job hazard analysis? These are the things that we've talked about over and over. Electrical conductors, the traffic, pedestrian traffic, vehicular traffic, both of them. Inexperienced personnel, or experienced personnel, the weather, right? Is it raining? Is it slippery? Is it, is it snow? Is it, is it muddy? Um, is it hot? Hot and humid, right? I mean, that's, that's, that's a hazard, can be a hazard. Um, the terrain, the equipment, whether it's new, whether it's old, doesn't matter. Obstacles, what's around, is there fencing, um, houses, uh, whatever the case is homeowners and pedestrians, right? People walking by. The person that may give you the job is the homeowner and can be a hazard. So what do you want to do, right? You want to inspect your job, right? Do a job site inspection. Everybody on the crew should get in the habit of inspecting the site for the hazards. It's never a routine job, right? One job is not the same as the next. Never, never is when it's coming, coming to tree care. Okay, um, it's at a different location. I mean, you can go as simple as saying that it's never the same job because it's never in the same location. Okay, um, even if it's in the same location, it's never the same tree. So it's never, it's never the same. It's never routine. Uh, what are some of the other hazards? You know your crew member, member skill set. It's the hardest part of being a manager, right? Does he really know how to operate that chainsaw? Do you really trust that guy putting that brush in the trip, chipper? Uh, has he been trained? Is he, is he, is he self-aware of himself and the training that he's had to handle that without you standing there watching him um, or her? Uh, all those types of things. So, you know, know, know what your crew members are good at and what they're not good at. It, it's those types of things. Um, drugs and alcohol awareness, right? An employee under the influence by definition is a hazard. Um, their judgment, their motor skills, reaction times are, are influenced. Uh, you know, as a, as a manager, we've talked about it before, right? Know the symptoms of what those things are, um, including the hangover. You hung over, same thing. You know, your, your reaction, your motor skills not going to be the same. Don't argue with employees about it. Um, just don't allow them to work uh, and don't cover it up for it, right? Oh, he's, he'll be okay. Uh, whether you're the manager, whether you're the Guy that works with them, you're the crew leader, and he's working with them. Ah, oh, you'll be okay. We'll get out on the job site. You'll you'll be okay. Um, you know, you're putting yourself at risk because he's not. He's number one. You're putting yourself at risk because he's not going to help you look after you. Um, but then, if you have to make up the difference of what he's able to produce and the safety that he's able to uh, 
um, pay attention to himself. Now, now you got two people to look after. Um, so it's, 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 don't cover up. It's not worth it. People make mistakes. Um, that's why you have sick time. That's why you just may not need to show up to the job. Whatever the case is, just send people home. Make it, make, make, make the job site safe for everybody. Not, not Johnny's going to be okay because by 12 o'clock he'll be okay. We'll be, we'll be fine. It's not, it's not worth it. Know those, know those hazards, right? Know that hazard. So conducting job briefings. Okay. Pay attention to this one. The communication of at least the following subjects for board culture operations. These are the things that you have to do in a job briefing. Hazard associated with the job, work procedures involved, uh, special precautions, the electrical hazards, the job assignments, and the PPE. Okay, and that's divine, defined by the ANSI uh, Z131 3.14. Okay, that's that's what we're that's the what we talked about it for third week now, right? That's the that's the governing body of this. Um, Tree Care Academy, right? That's what's that's what's written a lot of these rules. We'll get into the, how that's related to OSHA a little bit later on here um, in this lecture. Uh, design the job briefing for your crew. Everyone's involved in the job briefing. Everyone doesn't matter. Doesn't matter if you're new, old, not doing anything. If you're on the crew. You're in job. You're involved with the with the job briefing. I have a question and answer period. Make sure everyone understands if they had a question, it got answered, got cleared up. Uh, pay attention to this one as well. When the job of when the job changes or if new hazards are uncovered, the, the crew needs to huddle again to make sure everyone is fully aware of the changes in the work environment. So you need to have another briefing of essence, in essence, right? So if something changes, new hazards are uncovered, you know, say you're working in the morning. Sun's out, no problem. You stop for lunch, it starts raining. Okay, rains for two hours. You go through lunch. Boss tells you to wait it out. It stops raining. It's been raining for two hours. Now you go back to work. Things have changed, right? You know the hazard. There's a different hazard available. Going back to previous, right? The weather is part of that hazard now. So let's talk about it. Hey, we're not gonna we're not gonna chip right now. We're just gonna pile up. Here's what you need to do. Here's where we're gonna put it. Here's where we need to put it to be safe. This is slippery over here. All those types of things. You need to have that, have that conversation again. And those are, those are, I don't want to say common, right? But those things can happen, right? I mean, you can work in the morning and it not rain. And at lunch, you can have a two-hour raining session. And then your boss says, no, it's only, it's only a passing shower. I mean, that's, that's legitimate things that can happen to where you have to, amend what you do on a job site. All right, hazard control measures. A hierarchy of controls, okay? It's a graded or ranked series of hazard control measures, each subordinate to the one before it. Okay, so these are all related, right? Eliminate the hazard. That's number one. You eliminate the hazard, doesn't matter. Um, engineering control. Are you used to um, are you used to remove a hazard or place a barrier between the worker and the hazard, right? So you can have um, you know space in between. You can engineer that it's a big space. Um, whatever whatever that is, whatever that barrier is, um, you can. You can engineer that barrier to where there's an engineered control. You built something to separate the hazard, that type of thing. Um, trying to, you know, you, you put a you put a fence around a a well that was sticking up, or you put a you put a cover over a well that was sticker sticking up, right? If you're following trees and you don't want branches to hit that thing, you put a cover over it. That's going to help it. It's an engineered control of something, right? It's a barrier that you put around that to help it not be damaged. <clears throat> Administrative controls. Management dictated work practices and policies. Those are proper training, right? Pay attention to that. And PPE, okay? It's interesting that 
PPE is last, yet we talk about it first. Um, but the, you know, and I think it's, and it says it right, you can have all the PPE on in the world, but didn't eliminate one hazard. It might matter, it might not matter if you had your PPE on, right? So you can have all your PPE on, you can have your hard hat on, but if you didn't eliminate the dead tree hazard um, in the proper fashion, and it comes down on you, yeah, the hard hat you would hope is gonna help you, but you know, may not, right? Um, so it's interesting that we talk about PPE and enforce PPE it's right there in front of you um, but the reality is is that's that's the last measure of defense you know these other three are the other are the first lines of, of defense for for a hazard control your exposure to the occupational hazards is the basic method of protecting you and your fellow workers from harm right controlling that eliminating it uh, engineering control and your training aspects right all those are all those are helping control that exposure. PPE in general, right, shall be required where there is reasonable probability of injury or illness that can be prevented by such protection. Okay. You must inspect your PPE appropriate during the production of tree work. Um, you know, and direct your crew to do the same, you know. Going back to that lunchtime break, right? PPE looks good, you check it, you take, you do your thing, lunchtime, let me take off this, let me do whatever. Uh, if I throw it on the back of the truck, if I uh, throw it down on the ground, did something happen to it, when you pick it back up, put it back on, inspect it again, right? You know, check it throughout the production of the job of the tree work, right? Did you nick it? Did you nick your chaps and you didn't you didn't see it, you didn't feel it, you know? Check them out, right? Make make sure it's make sure it's good. Um, wear the appropriate PPE throughout the duration of the job. Uh, hard hats are not removed when you're dragging branches, right? Have your fall protection on, your hard hat, your eye protection, ear protection, your chaps, your gloves, your face shield, your boots. Um, you know, make sure nothing's loose, nothing's fitted, nothing's baggy hanging down, can get caught up in something. All those types of things. These are all things that you can control, right? We've talked about all these many of times, um, whether it's operating a piece of equipment or a chainsaw related to these tree books. Um, you know, it's all very similar, right? You know, if you have a loose fitting shirt, it's caught up in the PTO of the tractor, all those things, all, all of them are related all the way around. All right, training and supervision. Okay, so how often? Pay attention to this, this question, right? In the top performing tree company trading happens on a daily basis. Okay, talk about on the job training. Um, you know, that's where most training occurs. It's on the job, right? Uh, if you're a new employee to a company, you know, you, you go out with the crew. You learn how the crew does it compared to where you either worked before or you hadn't worked before, whatever the case is, you learn on that job. Um, you learn from you know, the crew leader telling you to wear this PPE, um, laying out the job uh, briefings, you know, doing those types of things, having those job briefings, involving this new person, telling them what their role is, tell, explaining what's going to happen on this job site, all that, all that happens on the job. Um, to the greatest impact, try structured on the job trainings, right? So if you have a structured uh, system, uh, develop a list of tasks for each crew member to learn. The skills of the crew members must be developed, uh, but not for the knowledge that they need. All these things can be can be structured to where, you know, uh, crew leader Joe doesn't take out a crew of three people and he just willy nillys it, right? I mean, you give him the give crew leader Joe the training uh, to to conduct on the job training. Uh, you know, this is what we do. This is how we do it. Uh, if you put it, if you put the time in to teach a task into a schedule, it'll get more quickly. It'll, it will get much more quickly than if it's simply on a list, get done. Um, you know, I think that that's the, the management aspect. Don't just, don't just assign it and tell somebody to do it. Put it on a schedule. Check up on it. Right? It's more than likely going to happen. Going to happen on time. Um, you just put it on a list. 
somebody will say, gee whiz, all these other things come up. You know, this fire happened. You know, this person didn't show up. We were behind, blah, 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 blah. And they say, you know, everything on this list and you just didn't get done. Um, so schedule it, follow up with it. That's how you, that's how you follow, you know, that's how things get accomplished um, and you hold people accountable. All right, preparation to training. Specifically identify the problem to be addressed to the skill or knowledge that must be improved during the session, right? So if you're gonna have a training, define what that is, okay? Have that skill, have that knowledge be defined uh, so you know what you're supposed to accomplish during this training, right? Otherwise, you call it training. We all go out there, what, what, are, we, what are we doing? Is it about PPE? Uh, is it about the chipper? Is it about my, you know, about my footing? What, what, what is it? No, this is specifically on PPE, everything to know about PPE, or this is everything to know on chipper safety and the operation of it, right? So train according to that specific aspect. Um, there's four levels um, to where your learning is, okay? The third one, um, you might want to pay attention to, to um, more, more so than the other ones. So there's four types of learning. There's the unconscious incompetence. I don't know, I can't do it, okay? I don't know, I don't know anything about it. I can't do it. Let that guy do it, okay? That's number one. There's conscious incompetence. I know what I need to learn but have the skills to do it, okay? But don't have the skills to do it, okay? I know what I need to learn. I know it, I just don't have the skills. Haven't done it, okay? Conscious competent. I learned well enough to do it right if I really concentrate, okay? So I know what I need to do. I can do it, but I really gotta pay attention at it, okay? Unconscious competence. Okay, skills so natural, I don't even have to think about it. So if you're thinking about these four things, you know, which one, which one do you want? Which one do you want to be? Which one do you want on your crew? Which one do you want as employees, right? I mean, you need to think about those aspects and everybody falls into one of those, one of those categories, right? You know, I don't know and I can't do it. I mean, you don't want that guy out cutting trees with you, um, you know conscious competence, right? I learned well enough to do it right if I really concentrate. Well, gee whiz, I hope, you, I hope you're gonna concentrate and move today. Um, you know, is that who you want out there, right? Probably more so than the unconscious incompetent, um, but you know, all those types of things. I mean, the unconscious competence is what you're obviously looking for. Um, it comes natural. Um, you don't wanna have to think about it, but you have to pay attention to it, okay? Check to see if the training is needed or if management is needed, right? Management and training are two different things. Is it, um, is it training because they don't know how to do it? Um, or is it management because we haven't given them the tools to do it? Uh, we haven't given them the skills to do it. We haven't given them the opportunity to get those skills. Um, you know, those are, those are, those are aspects, right? Is it, is it the management scheduled too much stuff? So it created an unsafe work environment. Um, that's nothing to do with training. Is management pushing you more to do something? That has nothing to do with training, okay? Those are types of things to think of as a manager, not beating up on a management, but those are things you have to think about. Set the objective to, to achieve by the training, right? Going back to the first one, right? You know, what are you, what are you trying to do, right? Define it. Determine the best format and the method, right? Is it is it in the classroom? Do you have a bunch of technicians that work outside, you know, all day, every day? Are they gonna are they the in the classroom sit there in front of a lecture screen with a PowerPoint, uh, with the lights dim type of group? Probably not. Okay. Determine how you will follow up after the training, right? Just because you do it, just because you did it, you checked it off, everybody signed the sheet, did it over with. Is that, that it? No, we need to make sure we keep following up. We relive it. Okay, set the stage. Put the employee at ease. Don't put them at pep pressure. You put more pressure on somebody, they get nervous, they clam up, they don't perform. Okay, create the interest and explain the benefits, right? Explain what we're doing. Answer questions. Be, be, be a, have a back and forth. Don't just 
Once again, jam it down their neck. You know, creating interest, you know, is going to going back to some of the feedback from the from the steel rep, right? Looking at some of those pictures, um, looking at some of those examples that happen, all those types of things, you know. Um, I think Robert had mentioned, you know, um, being in the military and, and there's things that happen, um, but it hit, you know, and people can tell you stories, but when you see pictures and you see reality, it kind of sets in a little bit different too, right? And so, you know, spark an interest, however that interest is. Okay, so what are the elements of a training session? You want to introduce the topic, you want to explain it, uh, you want to show the correct way, show the proper way to do it, practice it, observe it, critique it, reinforce it, right? So introduce what we're talking about, explain it, go through the detail, who, what, when, how, why, all that type of aspect, show the correct way, let, let people practice it, observe it, you critique it as you observe it, you know, hey, make this tweak, that's good, remember what we talked about here, and then reinforce, reinforce the importance and the benefit of it, right? Go back and forth, right? Follow up with it. Training techniques and tips. You know, stay conscious of crew members, stay conscious of what the crew members are doing. Pay attention to what they are doing. Always look to develop a new skill with each crew member. Put it in a schedule, right? Makes it, makes it easier to happen, makes it more likely to happen. Sharpen your employee's skills, train continuously. Uh, use each crew member. It doesn't always have to be a manager, right? It can be other crew members that train you. Um, you know, those are all different techniques, tips, thoughts, right? Of, of how you can spark the interest of how you can get people wanting to do it. Um, measuring learning skills and development. Before you begin training a new crew member, take the time to identify the things that should be learned first, second and third, right? So, you know, defining it. A lot of this is repetitive. A lot of this we're, we're saying it over and over again on, on one slide to the next, but that's part of, that's part of the training. That's part of being, being trained. Um, that's part of being safe when you're out in the work environment, right? When you want it to be unconscious, you want it to, you want to do this second nature. Okay. The repetition, you know, learning requires more than one, you know, um, you know the book, had, the book had mentioned, I, I, I'm, I'm assuming it's true, right? You forget half of what you hear within 24 hours. Yeah, there's probably some truth to that. Yeah, have a conversation with people. They don't, they don't remember what you talked about 24 hours later. Um, personally, I think it's that they don't care, but you know, hey, um, there probably is some truth to that, right? What you hear in 24 hours, I could go to the lecture here. I know in 24 hours, you guys may not listen to it, Right? I mean, just me sitting here yammering at you guys. Um, but you know, I mean, so there's, there's some truth to it. If we combine seeing and doing with hearing, the retention rate goes up significantly. Right? So everybody learns different. You know, you've heard that. Some people are visual. Uh, some people have to touch it. Uh, some people can just listen to things. Some people can do it audibly, right? They can, they can just hear things and they learn it. Um, you know, but if we combine seeing it, hearing it, and doing it, retention rate goes up significantly, okay? If we get rusty and do nothing, we go back to remedial training, okay? That's what remedial training is, is if we get rusty, we do nothing. That's what that is, pay attention to those two items. Repetition enables a crew member to not only learn the task, but also learn it in a, in a way that is at the fourth level of learning, the unconscious competence. Like I said, you want people to have it unconsciously, right? That's what the ideal situation is. Not unconscious to where you're not paying attention, unconscious to where you do it second to nature. When you, when you go to work, you clock in, you do whatever, you get your truck keys, you already have your hard hat on, your safety vest, you got everything with you. That's, you know, you wanna do it unconsciously. That's just part of what you do. Um, it's again, learning continuous. Learning is for leaders, not just crew members. It's for management. It's for everybody. Supervising and coaching. Okay, couple couple things to pay attention on the on the coaching aspect. Okay, changing employees' behavior and performance. There's level one, level two. Level one is coaching. It involves a short term situation or specific task and implies the employee wants or improves 
wants to improve and cooperate. Behavior is not consistent with their training, okay? But level one is it's coaching. Hey, you messed up, um, you know, employee wants to improve, employee recognizes they made a mistake, um, you know, all those types of things. You're bringing that up. You're, 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 you're talking about, hey, that wasn't right. That employee says, oh, oops, you're right. I didn't. I, I'm, I'm sorry. Let's figure that out. Let's make it right. You know, that's what, that's where coaching is, right? You know, coaching in, in a, in a football game or whatever game it is, you know, hey, we, we, we told you this was the route when we called this play. Oh gosh. Yeah. I made that mistake. Okay. All right. So the, you got it now, right? This is that's what coaching is, right? Hey, when we call this play, this is the route you run. Okay, you, you reemphasize what the training was, right? Then there's counseling. So that, that, that occurs when the employee can perform, but isn't, okay? You know it, you're electing not to do it. That's kind of what it is, okay? This is more of an ongoing process until the problem gets resolved, right? Which means you're an underperforming employee. That's where counseling comes in. Um, and all corrective action should be done in private. Okay. Now, coaching, if you're out on the football field, you know, that can be done in public. They do that in public, right? They'll chastise you in public. Um, co coaching on a job site, it can be done in public if they're in an unsafe environment, right? But if you're if they're not in an unsafe environment, it's a whole lot better to pull somebody to the side coaching through what they're not doing right. And there's disciplinary measures, right? It's progressive discipline. What's progressive, right? It ramps up as you go through time, okay? Progressive uh, discipline, circumstances surrounding an offense, such as, this, such as the severity of the misconduct, the number of times it has occurred, and any previous counseling uh, will suggest what action to be taken. Okay, first accord. First occurrence is usually counseling, verbal warning is sufficient, right? So it kind of goes back to the level one um, of changing an employee's behavior, right? So you, you know, if they're, if they're a cognizant employee and they want to do a good job, you know, a counseling, a verbal, uh, a verbal warning should be sufficient. Hey, bring it to your attention. I'm paying attention as the manager to what you did not do. You need to do it moving forward. And then they may say, okay, I'm sorry, I made a mistake. And then it's it's easily corrected. Be specific when you're doing it though, right? You go to the you go to counseling when the employee isn't performing right. Um, they're electing not performing right. You know, there's more formal, more formalities there, more written, written things down, human resources may get involved, all those types of things. So just uh the management aspect of, of, of the training and the supervising. So regulatory compliance, this is going to kind of go over the, um, you know, how is, how is the OSHA and uh, the ANSI um, related, right? Okay. If you focus on all the elements that we have covered throughout this lecture and in all the previous one, the OSHA and the DOT compliance would largely take care of themselves. Okay, so you know if you do or if you do all these things that we've talked about, you wear your PPE, you set up your job site, you set up your safety zones, uh, you know you're parking your vehicles in the right way, you're combing things off. All the OSHA, all the DOT, all that stuff is going to be covered. Okay. Once again, OSHA, Occupational Safety and Health Administration. A couple of things, you know, we've talked about this before, not trying to skip through it, just, you know, reiterating it, right? What, what, what is OSHA? Different states have different jurisdictions of OSHA. Some run and or develop, are developed by the state. Others are under the federal jurisdiction. The book kind of goes through that. Um, we live in North Carolina. We're going with North Carolina. So under North Carolina rules for OSHA, we operate our own occupational safety and health programs approved by the US Department of Labor. So the state develops them under the guidelines of the US Department of Labor, okay? So when you're looking for guidelines, um, you know, you have to look for those in a specific plan, 
is what trying to explain on that aspect. If you're going to the federal OSHA, it's not going to be specific to North Carolina. North Carolina has their own specific that they have written and it just falls under those guidelines. Okay, so there might be something different in the North Carolina laws that's not in the federal laws is basically the gist of that. Okay, uh, and that provides protections for private and local government employees within the state. So it doesn't matter who you work for, uh, private, public, it's, it's all covered. Okay, all state plans have adopted some version of 1910.269, a federal rule governing all utility maintenance, including line clearance and tree trimming specifically. Okay, so just know that legality, that's kind of what I was saying. Under the North Carolina law, that includes in that, uh, in that version of that number, um, that, that's what covers the tree aspect, the tree operations aspect, and that's in the state plan of North Carolina. So OSHA and record keeping. Uh, if OSHA should ever investigate your company, a written safety policy and written records of safety training help to establish the employer's accountability for making employees aware of hazards. When records of safety program enforced or disciplinary actions help prove the investigating officer that the company actually enforces the policy and training. Okay, so if you have that, um, let me just finish that up. OSHA tends to view uh, OSHA's view tends to be that if it isn't written down, it didn't happen. Okay, so when an accident happens in your company and it's investigated by OSHA, they're looking for, did you have a written policy? Um, where's the safety trainings? Did, you know, where's the, where's the rosters? Uh, who, who went to that training? Um, you know, have you enforced it? Have you written somebody up for a training violation? Um, all those types of things. Worst case scenario, someone gets hurt, OSHA comes in, does an investigation, and you got nothing. And you probably won't have a business um, after that. But yeah, if you do nothing, yeah, you're in a you're in a bad you're in a bad spot because that means you didn't train anybody, you didn't show anybody the right way to do things. And yeah, and as a result of you not doing that, this guy got hurt or this girl got hurt. That's that's not that's not good. OSHA and PPE. No matter where you work in the U.S., you are going to find requirements for PPE uses in two places, the OSHA regulations and the ANSI, okay? That's what we're talking about, tree work on that aspect. OSHA regulations tend to be vague, okay? That's why, this, you know, a state can elect to rewrite it, which North Carolina has done. They've kind of rewrote their own. They've included everything in, in OSHA is still included, okay? But they have more specifics as well. The ANSI is the same thing, okay? pay attention to this one, right? The, the ANSI standard is much more specific about what and when the PPE is required and when because it is written strictly for arborists. So arborists wrote it according to the Tree, tree Care Academy book, um, okay? OSHA doesn't dive into the depth of what that is. It's more of a bigger picture type thing, okay? So the ANSI has been even more detailed than the state. Okay, and that's what we're looking for on tree care uh, when we're talking about that. OSHA does not give specifics when to, of when to wear PPE. Okay, therefore it is not unlawful to send your crew out to do a job without PPE that you are comfortable they will not be exposed to a hazard. Okay, so kind of odd, right? You know, OSHA comes, somebody gets hurt, OSHA comes and knocking. Okay, trying to think of an example. You don't, um, you don't have to wear your face shield um, to use the chipper, okay? Um, so the guy didn't put the face shield on, something went flying back in his face, he got hurt, OSHA comes and knocking, it's not in the OSHA book, you, you didn't do anything wrong, okay? Um, the ANSI, uh, if, if it's in ANSI, right, there's also, there's, there's a, that's what you should be following. That's what we're trying to follow here in the Tree Care Academy. That's what the certifications that we're getting, um, that's what we're working towards. We want to put that extra step in there, okay? That's why when it comes to OSHA, OSHA is um, vague, 
That's why the AMSI exists. That's why states rewrite their own um, occupational safety and health rules and regulations. Hopefully that kind of explains it a little bit. The Tree Care Institute suggests to get in the habit of wearing your hard hat and glasses at all times on the job site. Just because OSHA doesn't tell you to wear the hard hat, tree care is trying to tell you to. Okay, that's the that's the gist. DOT DOT compliance. You know, I think we 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 hear about it a lot um, about uh, commercial motor licenses. Uh, and commercial driver's licenses, right? So we hear we hear that. Uh, so just to try to clarify that a little bit, um, you know, I think it I think it's helpful. Um, so a commercial motor license have special requirements for both the driver and the vehicle. Okay, it's, it's any self-propelled or towed vehicle used on a highway in an interstate commerce to transport passengers or property. Then there's guidelines within that. Okay, so it has to have a greater a vehicle. Um, a gross vehicle weight of 10,000 10, pounds or more, okay? It's designed to transport more than eight passengers, including the driver, for compensation. Uh, it's designed to transport more than 15 passengers, including the driver, not for compensation, uh, and used for transport, transporting material uh, found by the Secretary of Transportation to be hazardous and in the quantity requiring place car, okay? Be careful about interstate. It does not necessarily mean you have to cross the state lines. Okay, that could be in North Carolina under your DOT compliance. It doesn't mean you have to cross state lines. Okay. Uh, commercial driver's license requirement are triggered when the gross vehicle weight is above 26,000 pounds or more. Okay. Once again, know your home state guidelines. Okay, it's not necessarily when you go from North Carolina to South Carolina. That's the only rule. No, it's within, it's inside your state as well, okay? So trying to give a little definition of commercial, commercial motor license uh, and commercial driver's license, okay? On the Moodle um, week eight um, in the PowerPoint, you know, click on the anonymous surveys. Surveys are kind of mid-year reviews uh, for, for me or for what you think of the class, those types of things. Uh, they are anonymous. Um, Liz gets those, uh, not me. Um, I'm sure, you know, if she needs to share things with me, she'll share them with me, but obviously there's not, you know, there's not that level of communication on that aspect. Uh, not out to get anybody, not doing that. Uh, it's more to make this class better for the remaining half of the semester and in the future. So, we appreciate you for uh, filling out those course evaluations. You won't hurt my feelings. Um, you know, it's all about learning, whether it's um, me, me getting better to help you guys or giving you guys more of what you're looking for. So if you guys can do those, that would be greatly appreciated. And our discussion question for the, for the week, um, describe how you will influence your boss to implement a good sustainable training program. You know, how will you organize your own training program as an owner? Okay, you know what, what you work for a company that doesn't have a training program. Boss doesn't spend a lot of time training people, right? But you know, how do you how do you help him? How do you how do you have that conversation? Um, what what do you what do you what do you talk about? What do you bring up? Uh, you just mention it to them, um, you give them details, uh, you give them uh, statistics, you know, how, how does that um, how do, you, how do you do that? How do you start that program? How do you influence him uh, or her to, to, to take safety seriously? All those types of things, you know? Um, you know, and, or, or how do you develop your own? You know, if you're the owner of the company, how do you, how do you develop your own? Uh, how often do you want to do training? Um, all those types of things. Just I think it's a good discussion. Uh, good to get your mind wrapped around that. Um, but that's all we got for tree care. Uh, that's the safety specialist book. book. Uh, so we're done out of the three books and I will let you guys know when the quizzes are due. Um, coming up within lab and it's written on the on the Moodle page as well.